What's going on guys? Matt here with TNM Product Reviews. Coming back at you with another review. Doing something a little different here today. We're a little mobile. Um, so we're going to be taking a look at a product for my 2019 WRX. Uh, so here's the beast. Not much of a beast, but here she is. Um, so what we're going to be looking at today is the uh, Cobb access port and the dial vent mount for the 2019 series WRX and STI. Uh, so let me get you set up inside the car here and we'll take a look at it. All right guys, so this is the Cobb access port for the 2019 WRX. So as you can see here, we're on the uh, logging or the gauge screen. So when you first turn this on, when you go through the, the initial setup, this is the screen you're initially going to come to. Um, so the Cobb access port is used for a few different things, um, mainly for logging and tuning of the Subaru WRX and STI. Um, so as you can see, you have gauges, performance, troubleshooting, tune, and then an uninstall option on mine, as well as a help and a setup option. So let's go through each section here so you can see what you can do. Um, so in gauges, you can select between uh, a few different options for your gauges here. So I'm running six gauges and you can choose what each of these gauges shows. So if I select one here, you can change your monitor. There's a ton of options what you can choose. Uh, pretty much any sensor in this car you can pull up on this gate or on this, uh, on the access port and on the gauge setup here. So I'm not going to change that one. So what I am running, let me get out of this so it'll, there we go. Uh, so top left, boost extended, so that's my, my boost gauge. Yes, the WRX does have a built-in boost gauge, um, but I like running a spare one there. I have my air fuel sensor one ratio. I have my wastegate duty cycle, feedback knock, fine knock learn, and my dynamic advanced multiplier or dam and then here in the center these what five lights uh, that is actually a shift gauge so you can set it up at a certain rpm and they will light up and tell you when to shift your car but they're also notification for when the access port is logging so if you do an e-tune or your tuner needs a log based on uh, your car you can actually come in here you can configure your data logging and you can choose which of these sensors are going to be logged and when you're sitting here if you just press the center button so as you can see logging at 16 Hertz the lights are going up and down there just showing that it's logging press it again and the log stopped so cool option there for e-tune uh, you can configure your shift lights you can change your rpm for your shift lights when they activate you can change the units so imperial imperial uk metric metric with afr and you can change your gauge layout so you can go for anywhere from one to six gauges uh, which is nice i obviously am running the six gauge i like that setup so that's the gauge screen. Moving down here, we have performance. So you have a zero to 60 and a quarter mile. So zero to 60 calculates zero to 60 based on your vehicle and driving style. Quarter mile calculates quarter mile result of your vehicle and driving style. So if you select it, accelerate to begin performance result calculation, obey traffic laws, do not put others at risk. And then quarter mile, same thing. Um, keep it to the track. If you're gonna be doing these, don't get yourself in trouble. Uh, you also have a troubleshooting option. Uh, so you can actually run a check engine light. So you can, up here you have emissions readiness. So it'll test the status of your emissions on your car. Make sure it's good for your emissions test. You can identify the vehicle 
So in this case here, I have a 2019 US domestic market WRX with a manual transmission, Cobb custom features, Gen 2. You can read a current memory state from the ECU with the memory snapshot. You can read trouble codes and you can reset the ECU. So you reset the learning and clear codes from the ECU as well. So if you have a check engine light, you can see what it is and you can clear it, see if it resolved. Down here you have tune. So if you go into tune, you have a couple options. First one is adjustments. And inside of adjustments, you can adjust the RPM for idle. So plus or minus 300 RPM. Flat, you can turn on flat foot shifting and the RPMs for it. Um, this one's just default. It defaults at 8,000 RPMs. I haven't set up flat foot shifting. And then you can set up your launch control. So in that case, with the launch control, as long as your car is not moving, moving is up here a little bit, as long as the car is not moving anywhere under one mile per hour, uh, if you let off the brake, hold down the clutch, put it in first gear, and slam your foot to the floor, it will stop the car from over revving at whatever RPM you set it at. It will sit there and bounce off the launch control limiter. Then you have an option to reset both the launch control and flat foot shifting settings. You can change the ECU map, which I'm not gonna change, but you can do two. You can do a real time, which is a temporary flash. Uh, so if you want to switch over to economy or valet mode, that's a good way to do that. And then you can do a full reflash as well, uh, which this is permanent. You can restore the cob off the shelf maps, show the current map, and like on this one it's going to show that I'm using the 93 highway stage one map with the heavy wastegate because I wasn't hitting boost targets. Uh, you can, all right, so that's, that's all that the, the inside of the cob has on here. You can change your on and off, your units and restore defaults. Obviously, the uninstall is going to unmarry the cob from the car. Um, that way you can sell it separately or change it over to a different vehicle. It will set it back to the factory ECU settings. Uh, now, keep in mind, when you purchase the cob, it does come with a single mount. Uh, I haven't even opened mine, so this is the, the mount that it comes with. It's just a vent mount with some 3M tape. Um, I didn't care for that, so what you're looking that it's sitting in here, and I'm just going to go ahead and power it off. And we'll remove it. So this is the dial cob access port mount vent mount. So you have a defroster vent right here. Uh, what this does is you remove the defroster vent, there's the cover. And there's these two screws have a bar connected to them. You sit this mount down inside and the bar actually holds it tight against the dash. And then there is a connector that goes down inside here that holds the data cable coming from the OBD2 port so that the cable sits in there. So the only issue that I have with the dial mount, I like where it sits. It is a pain to access the power button here on the top of the cob so this is actually your power button and to put the cob access port back inside the dial mount especially one-handed is a pain because it is literally up against the glass so it is tight up against the glass here. Um, so that was the startup of the access port. You see, you can upload custom start screens as well. I'll shut it back off here once and show you. So when you turn it on, you get access port. And then I have a custom screen on mine for my car. And it just reminds you to check Cobb's website for updates. 
Um, but the dial mount, like I said, it, it is kind of a pain if you're taking your access port in and out of your car. You don't have to leave it connected. Um, the only time you really need it connected is when you are, when you are uh, data logging or in the case, if you want to flash it, you need it connected. Um, so my, my data cables actually run down through the dash and then connects to the OBD to hide the wires, which is nice. So it keeps everything out. I've seen some that have the um, pillar mounts, they have suction cup mounts, 3M dash mounts. Like there's a ton of different mounts for it, but I like that dial. It is 3D printed, so it is a little rough looking. It doesn't match 100% because of the roughness. You can see obviously where the 3D printer machined it. But I mean, if you're really that picky about it, take a little sandpaper to it and clean it up. Nice part is it does leave the defroster vents open on the front for your driver's door. Um, but that's the only little bit of vent you get and it doesn't heat the cob up enough to cause any trouble. So like I said, the, the only one issue with it is it is right up against that glass. So it's hard to get to the power button. I have mine set on auto off. So when I shut the car down, it'll say it's trying to access the vehicle. I can clear that screen. Or it's not going to clear. <laughs> I have my door open so it doesn't know. Let me just go ahead and do that. Of course, it's not going to auto off this time. Go figure. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at, let me go ahead and just give this start up here. Let me switch back over to gauges. and start up the car. So as you can see there, the boost extended is at negative 6.8. My gauge is running six to nine on the car. AFR starting to change there a little bit. And then if I Hit a little bit there, so you see the, the duty wastegate went up to 57%. My boost went to negative 0 0.41. Uh, AFR dropped down to 11.47. And then when you're driving, obviously, you're going to get some more. Um, like your feedback knock, you're going you're gonna to get a little bit of feed knock. feedback knock. I usually get... Um, 1.48 on my typical drive to work. Uh, it's nothing to be concerned of. I don't get any feedback knock learn and my dam never changes. So the, the, the knock sensors, let me shut the car off here. The knock sensors and the knock algorithm that Subaru uses is very sensitive. Um, it's kind of a pain in the rear end actually, because if you hit a pothole, you can't actually set off the knock sensors. So there we go. Uh, detected the engine power shut off and will now power off. And then the cob shuts off. So that's nice. That's a nice feature as well. But that is the cob access port and dial mount for the 2019 Subaru WRX and STI guys. I uh, hope you liked the video. If you liked what you've seen, hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified anytime we upload any new videos. That's all I got for you here today, guys. Later.